Hey folks, today we talk about Lachat Lier's principle, and this is the last podcast for this unit. Hooray! Um, this is kind of cool. Lachat Lier's principle is kind of cool. Write this down, please. When a system is at equilibrium, imposing a change on the system will shift the position of the equilibrium to reduce the effect of the change. In other words, you always go away from additional stuff. Another way to put it, the amounts of products or reactants may have increased or decreased. Write that down. I know it's hard to understand. It won't be for long. Okay, so Le Chatelier's principle is all about balance. So again, if I look at the seesaw, teeter-totter, whatever you want to call it, it's pretty much balanced. What happens if I add another person over on the right-hand side? Well, obviously, the right-hand side is going to go down and hit the dirt or the sand. So how do I balance that? Well, to balance it, I have to add somebody else over here. Right? That's one way to do it. Or for those of you who spent a lot of time on one of these, you can take these people who are over here and just move them up here so you can shift them. Right? So what you're doing is you are shifting. In either case, if you add something on the right-hand side, you have to shift everything to the left to make it balance out. You either have to add more to the left and, or you have to shift these people to the left all right, so that they move to the left more. Okay, That's kind of the idea. Now, of course, if I took away the person on the right, or took away part of the person on the right and put a little kid there, then the person on the left would have to move to the right. Or, you know, it works both ways. All right, so it's all about balance and maintaining balance. All right, changing the amount or concentration of any reactant or product deserves, disturbs the equilibrium. However, you must understand that KEQ does not change. All right, so long as you haven't changed the temperature or the pressure or something, the um, equilibrium constant, if you're just adding product or adding reactant or taking them away, the equilibrium constant does not change. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's look at our equilibrium constant for this reaction. All right, our equilibrium constant, remember that this is a liquid so we don't worry about it, so we always do the products over the reactants, we do not have any coefficients so our KEQ is going to be the concentration of CO2 divided by the concentration of H2CO3. Well, let's just surmise, for purposes of argument, that we have exactly the same amount on both sides. That our equilibrium constant is 1. I realize it's not 1, but for purposes of what we're doing right now, let's just assume it's 1. What happens if I add more carbon dioxide? Well, if I make this number bigger up here, to keep our ratio of 1 to 1, what do I have to do with the number down there? Well, obviously, I have to make that number bigger. All right? Well, if I make this number on the bottom bigger, then my concentration of carbon dioxide is going to get smaller. So bottom line is I have to end up with a 1 to 1 relationship. So if I add carbon dioxide over here, it is going to shift. It is going to force the reaction to move more to the left. So because I have too much carbon dioxide and not enough um, carbonic acid, I guess is what this is. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to produce more carbonic acid to make my ratio of carbonic acid to carbon dioxide back to what it used to be. All right, so if I add CO2, I'm going to shift this left. So I'm going to produce... I'm going to create, not, let's not use the word produce, create more reactant. Okay, so I have to shift left, so I've got to go and create more of this to balance it out. Now what happens if I were to remove carbon dioxide? Well, if I make my top number smaller, I have to make my bottom number smaller to maintain my, uh, my ratio. So that means that this will have to shift right. Sorry about the no noise in the background, guys. That's a uh, trash truck. Okay, so if we remove CO2, we're going to shift to the right. What happens if I add some carbonic acid? Well, again, if I add this stuff, I have to shift to the right to produce more of the stuff on the right. Okay, so my reaction is going to shift to the right. All right, now we can treat heat just like any other product or reactant, whichever it happens to be, if heat is the product or heat's the reactant. So let's look at an example. All right, let's ignore heat for a moment. 
And let's use that same concept of what we just learned in our last slide, and let's add some sulfur trioxide. So if we add that, we're adding it over here, so we're adding a product. So we added the product, which means we have to shift the reaction left because we have to go and produce more reactant to keep this thing balanced. So this will shift left because we have added more product. We have to shift it left so it'll produce more reactant. What happens if we add heat? Well, notice that heat is over here on the product side, just like SO3 is a product. So if we add SO3, we have to shift left. Similarly, if we add heat, we have to go and shift left again. Right? The logic remains the same. We have created more product. We have added more of the stuff that's on the right-hand side. We've added more product to keep it balanced. That must then shift left so that more reactant is produced. Similarly, if we remove SO3, if we took some of this away, then we have to create more of it. So we're going to shift right. And similarly, if we remove heat, that is also a product. So we would also have to shift right. How about pressure? Well, what you have to do really is look at the number of moles of gases on each side. And the more gas, the more it's impacted by the pressure. So increasing pressure shifts towards the side with fewer moles of gas. That should make sense. Let's look at an example. Right here we have nitrogen and hydrogen, and we do the K for pressure the same way of, this would be the concentration of NH3 squared divided by the concentration of N2 divided by the concentration of H2 cubed. Right? So we look at, at K for pressure the same way. Right? But look at what's going on. Over here on the right, we only have two moles of gas. And over here on the left, we have four moles of gas. Now, we only care about the gas right now because we're talking about pressure. Right? So we have four moles to two moles. So if you go and increase the pressure, which of these two sides is going to be impacted more? Well, over here, I've got four things to be impacted. Over here, I've only got two things to be impacted. So if I increase the pressure, I go and impact these guys more. So I compress these guys more than I compress these guys because there are twice as many things hitting each other over here on the left. Right? So if I increase pressure in this particular system, I have to move from the 4 towards the 2. So I'm going to shift to the right. And if I decrease the pressure, I will do the reverse. I will shift to the left. Because again, now there's more room, that's going to impact the guys on the left more because they're four moles. Okay? Does that make sense? If it doesn't, please see us in class. We'll be happy to explain that. All right. So here's one where we put everything together. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can tell me whether these things shift right or shift left, and what do you think? All right. First one should be pretty easy. We added chlorines. Chlorine gas is over here, so we're going to shift away from that. So we're going to shift left. We increase the pressure. Well, on the left, we have one mole of gas. And on the right, we have two moles of gas. So if we increase the pressure, we impact this guy more. So we will shift left. What happens if we reduce the heat? Well, heat's over here. If we add heat, we're going to move to the right because we want to get away from the heat. So if we reduce the heat, we want to move towards the heat. So again, we are going to shift left. Remove PL, uh, PCL3 as it's formed. So we get some PL3 and we take it out. Well, if we remove it, then that means we need to produce more of it. So in this case, this is going to be the only one here where we shift to the right. All right, here's another one. Go ahead and see if you can do this one. Pause the video, give it a try. Come on, doesn't just help listen to me. Pause the video. All right, we're removing water. Water's on the right-hand side, so we're going to shift to the right. If we add carbon dioxide, we have to move away from that. We have to produce more of the other thing. 
left. So here we're going to shift left. We reduce the heat. Interesting. Heat isn't written in here. So where does heat go? What kind of reaction is this? You should be able to look at that and figure that out. Well, this is methane gas plus oxygen giving me water and carbon dioxide. So that's a combustion reaction. And all combustion reactions, the heat is on the right. So if I were to add heat, I have to go left. If I'm reducing heat, if I take the heat away, then I want to produce more heat. So this thing is going to shift to the right. That was a hard question. Right? But that was just something where you're starting to put the pieces together that you've learned over the course of the past few months. Add oxygen gas. Clearly, oxygen gas is right here. I have to move away from that since I've added it. So I'm going to shift to the right. And I increase the pressure. Hmm, let's see. I have three moles of gas on the left and three moles of gas on the right. So increasing the pressure impacts both sides equally. So this has no effect at all on the reaction, on the uh, equilibrium coefficient. All right, folks. That's it. We're done. Congratulations. You've finished another unit. We'll see you in class. Ask us questions if you have them. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.